Hey guys, it's Molly. Sorry about the uh, uh, departure from YouTube. I didn't leave, I just took a break and now I'm back. And I thought uh, today we would do something a little bit different. I thought we would go over my vintage cookbook collection and then I could talk a little bit about how I acquired these books and where you might be able to acquire some vintage cookbook if you want to build a collection. So what I've got in front of me is I have uh, went through all my books and I organized them by decade. So I've got my oldest ones here and I have the White House cookbook here. This one is in really delicate condition. As you can see, it's basically falling apart. Dan got this for me as a gift and this one's from 1890 this is my oldest book that i have that i physically own um and next to it i have uh, the gold metal flower cookbook i believe that one's from 1910 uh this one over here little pamphlet uh 1917 this was one ugh, i don't know if i could talk this one is also uh was falling apart so i put it in some uh sleeves this one's from 19 18. Um, and then we over here we have the 20s. I had a guess on the date. Somebody wrote 1924 on here and there wasn't a date in the book so I'm gonna guess in 1920s. Interesting this one's from Montesano, Washington from a, a grocery store I'm pretty sure is not in business anymore. So Montesano is probably about an hour or maybe like 40 minutes away from me. I'm in Olympia. So that's cool. It's a local book and then these are also from uh, 1927. So I'll just quickly go through the my books and then we'll talk about where you can find yours. Okay, now we're on to the 30s, which surprisingly is one of my favorite decades for uh, vintage food. And I think it's because uh, primarily I have American cookbooks and you know, in the US they were going through, there I am again, they were going through the depression. So people had to get creative with their food. So we see that a lot in these 30s cookbooks and it's really interesting. And you might hear my dog panting in the background. We just got done playing ball and she's a little hot. So um, we're gonna start over here and I think this is 1931. Sometimes it's hard to find a date on some of these cookbooks. I'm pretty sure this is 31. 32, um, I should have written down the years. What a year is this? 33, and then it goes anyways, basically goes through the 30s. These are both, this is, uh, those two are 1936. These are 1937. This is one of my absolute favorite cookbooks. This one, and these three are 1938. And again, if you see any cookbook that you find interesting as I'm going through them, and you're like, hey Molly, make a recipe from one of these cookbooks, just make a note of the year point tell me which one you want to see and we will test a recipe out so just to give you kind of what they look like this one is also really good okay let's get to the 40s okay so we're in the 40s which is another really interesting uh time period for food because people are obviously trying to ration so you'll see some really interesting recipes in this in these books so we're going to start with 1941 here or sorry 1940 here I believe these were from 41, 43, 44, 1944. Again, if you watch any of my videos, you'll know I use this cookbook a lot. I absolutely love it. 46, uh, I believe this one is 47. Let me see if I can confirm that. Yeah, 47. This one is 48 and uh, Spokane, Washington. So other side of the state, but again, a Washington book and 49. So yeah, lots of good things. I notice a lot of, I find a lot of old canning books, which I don't can very much, but I probably should. I have never made anything out of this bit of Sweden. My family's actually Swedish. So I should probably try something from here. But it looks like a church, Friendship Circle, First Covenant Church. So I had to buy that when I saw it because, you know, local and Swedish. But there's some good things in that. Okay, let's go to the 50s. Okay, now we're into the 50s. And you all probably recognize the Better Homes and Gardens Quad Cookbook. This is 1950, 1950, 
1950, 52. That one is 50 something. Anyways, these are all 1950 something. I want to point out this one. This one is another one I've never made anything from. Experiences with Foods, but it's a home ec book from, looks like it was last checked out in 63. The condition was awful. And this was actually in the Chehala School District. That's about 30 minutes south of me. Hey, kitty. So about 30 minutes south of me. But yeah, this is one of their books. Um, it was new in 57. I thought that was kind of cool. I don't think the condition was awful. It actually looks like it's in great condition to me. But it's they've got a bunch of recipes in here and, and how to how to make and do all sorts of things. How to like dress a chicken and yeah. And so this is one of my favorite casserole books. Some of the recipes in here honestly don't look very appetizing, but they're fun to try out. And then we got cookie books. So yeah, another canning book. Hors d'oeuvres, snacks. Dan likes this one. Lots of snacks for Dan. Another cookie book. Yeah, the 50s were a good decade. I'm surprised I don't have more cookbooks from the 50s, but I I do find a lot of them. Oh, God, they have no, no respect. I do find a lot of cookbooks from the 50s, and I'm more interested in cookbooks from like the 40s on earlier, so I don't pick up as many of the 50 ones. I, I'm definitely more interested in 40s earlier, but the 50 ones are interesting to look at as well. So let's get on to the 60s and 70s. Okay, we're gonna look at the 60s. So we're gonna start off with this Girl Scouts of America cookbook, Cooking Out of Doors. This is from 1960. Uh, a barbecue book or a grilling book, not barbecue, but grilling book. We actually have two of them. And then Maryland's Way. I'm from Maryland, so that's actually from Maryland. Uh, this one is 1964, Dinners for Two. I thought that would be handy for me and Dan, since it's just the two of us. Uh, and 1965 for this appetizer book. I love appetizer books because they, they get so many good ideas for appetizers. And uh, this is actually a binder. It is a cookbook, a salute to cooking. I made a pie out of here. This is from 1965. Um, this was Dan's grandmother's cookbook. I got it from her when she passed away. His grandpa was in the Air Force. And so she, I guess, I never got a chance to talk to her about this because I didn't know about this cookbook until after she passed. But I imagine she got this uh, when he was in the service and during the 60s. I think it's really cool. It has a ton of party recipes in here, which I'm all about that. I love my love a good party recipe. I got this Maryland's Way cookbook from my mom. Um, I got lots of old, old Maryland recipes in there. Yeah, so there we go. You're going to be seeing a lot of recipes coming from this Girl Scout cookbook because Dan and I, I'll have to take you guys on a little quick trip to the backyard. Dan and I uh, redid our fire pit area. So now we have a little fire pit that we can cook food out on. So, all right, let's get on to the 70s. Okay, and the last decade I have is the 70s. Okay, so this one's 1974. I love a good casserole cookbook and I've never made anything from here. So let me know if you wanna see something. Uh, another local book we have, the Mason County Senior Center from Shelton, Washington. This is like maybe 25, 30 minutes north of me. Shelton's a pretty small town if you're not familiar with it. It's known for logging. Um, this book, this <laughs> Food You Remember, Yugoslavian Cookbook. This cookbook um, I got from Dan's dad, Tim. He did uh, printing when he was in college and this was, I think, maybe the first cookbook he printed. If not, it was one of the first where he printed this. So he actually made this and I, we made pizza out of it and it was actually really good. And then this book, uh, it's called it's called Stocking Up. Um, when we lived in Maryland, we had a farm. And so my mom had a huge garden and she would uh, uh, prepare and store a lot of the produce that we grew. So she used this book a lot and I got this from her. And then this book, Better Than Store Bought, I love making things from scratch as much as possible, um, just because I like I like to cook, obviously. So this is a fun cookbook. I also got this one for my mom, and she used it in Maryland too. Okay, so I don't have any cookbooks from the 80s or 90s. I consider 70s the latest that I'll go. But let's sit down and talk about where you can find vintage cookbooks. Okay, let me move my microphone so you can actually hear me. 
I don't have any makeup on because it's hot and I'm not putting it on. So anyways, so I primarily get my cookbooks from antique stores, but you can also look at uh, thrift stores and uh, estate sales, garage sales. Those are really good places to get cookbooks. I don't spend a whole lot of money on mine because I'm cheap, but it would have to be a really special cookbook for me to spend a significant amount of money on. Usually the ones I pick up are only for a few dollars, but I mean, the amount of money you spend on a book doesn't mean the recipes in it are going to be good, you know, so just keep your mind open. I've seen them at all different price points. And oddly enough, the bar cook, the bar books for bar recipes, the vintage one of those seem to be worth some money because I've looked, tried to get a couple of those in the past and they're all expensive from what I've seen. Another good resource to get uh, vintage cookbooks is obviously online. I've gotten a couple from Etsy and uh, you could check out eBay, any of those websites that, where you can buy used items, you could find used vintage cookbooks on. Um, family members are another good place. A couple of my cookbooks are from family members that decided they didn't want them anymore and I gave them a good home. Uh, and another good resource for vintage cookbooks is uh, I use the Internet Archives. So if you Google Internet Archives, it's basically like an archive of all different sorts of media in different formats, including books that have been scanned and uploaded to the Internet. So you can look, you can narrow your search by like cooks or books, cookbooks between like certain decades, between certain years, and you can look and see what's what they have scanned and what's available. And you can typically save a copy of that book or print it out. And that's what I have in this binder. I didn't realize these books were so big before when I started printing them, but I have the Fireless Cookbook. And if I recall correctly, I think that one's from the 1800s that was scanned and I just printed it out, but I've got the recipes for that. So, and that's free. You don't have to pay for that. So if you didn't want to spend money on any, any cookbooks or you just don't have any antique stores or no other way to acquire them, check out the internet archives and other internet archive collections. And you might be able to find some free uh, uh, vintage cookbooks that you can look up and use so that would be a good resource for you but again just letting people know let people in your life know that you're on the hunt for some vintage cookbooks and people are always willing to give away things you might have some friends that want to give you some but my as you've seen you just saw my whole collection it's not i mean it's a decent size but it's not like humongous I mean, I haven't even used half these books, so I would like to expand and start cooking out of different ones. A lot of them have baked, like, are have baked recipes in them, like breads and cookies and things like that. So again, if you see a book that caught your eye and you're like, hey, Molly, make a recipe from that, just let me know which decade it is and which book it is, and then I'll go through and I'll just pick a recipe and we'll make it. But um, yeah, so hopefully this kind of, uh, was interesting for you to see how many books do I have in my collection and where did I get them all from? Primarily from antique stores. I love going to antique stores and I'm always looking out for cookbooks. So, but it's a lot of fun to collect them. I don't know anybody else personally that collects vintage cookbooks. I'm the only one I know that does it, but I know other people do do it. So, it's fun and uh, it's an addicting hobby. So if you decide to do this, just be forewarned, get a little bookshelf ready to go because once you start collecting them and making recipes from them, you're gonna wanna do it more and more. And if you do buy a vintage cookbook and make a recipe from it, please let me know because I would love to hear what you made, what year it's from and how it turned out. It's a lot of fun. All right, and I will be getting back to work making my regular videos uh, this weekend. And so I hope to see you guys in the next video. All right, bye. There's my chicken coop. We'll do some recipes with out here.
are you doing, Rue? <laughs> okay, and um, let me. Oh, that's a lovely close up. God, I look terrible. And uh, would you guys be interested in seeing some TikToks from me about recipes? I have TikTok, and I'm wondering if you guys watch TikTok too, because I'd be willing to create a TikTok account and doing recipes on there in addition to the YouTube videos if, if you guys are interested. If you'll watch them, then I'll do it. Just let me know in the comments.